Good afternoon. It is Monday, March 28, 2022, 5.01 p.m. And I'll call to order the Freetown Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, we will be going into executive session and then coming back into open session. Uh, we will be going into executive session for the following reason. Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss, discuss strategy with respect to litigation, an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares, and I do, Excel Recycling, LLC versus the Town of Freetown. Um, I'll note that Attorney Pucci will be calling into this meeting because he's not feeling well. Um, so with that, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. Second. Yeah, just give me, I'll second it, give me the motion. Motion made? Motion made. I'll second that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Selectman Grunwald? Aye. Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right, we're now in executive session. We ready to go? Ready. Okay. All right, uh, we are now out of ex executive session and back in open session. Um, today we're going to start off with personnel board, so I'll pass it over to George for okay. personnel. Uh, we have a few appointments. Uh, the first appointment and the second appointment are uh, for Lady Teddy. And uh, I do have a couple of questions on that. Maybe I'll do the best time to bring it up. We were supposed to hire a search uh, company. Uh, so we, what we, the decision we made, we voted on to, we're going to do an analysis um, of the town structure to figure out and have a third party come in. And no, no. what does that have to do? The town structure has nothing to do. With yeah, so because we might we, we were want to figure out if a town administrator is even even makes sense for our town or should there be some some other type of administrative kind of leadership position, right? Okay, we talked about that in the past, town manager rather than the town administrator. Yeah, and kind of define defining what that means. And then from once we have that information, what makes sense in our town, then we can figure out what the next steps are. Well, I think that's tiptoeing through the tulips to tell you the truth, because we had a runway of what we were supposed to do, and we're not doing it. So we have, do we have the company that? Yeah, George has met with the company. The um, he met with Libby from the Collins Group, to that's doing the organizational study for the town. For the organizational study. Right. Yes. Right. And but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how this whole issue was structured from day one. Yep. Which was. Debbie was hired for six months interim while we had a search for a new administrator since the uh, last administrator was abruptly uh, let go. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we hadn't really moved on the one. Yeah. What, what you're talking about is. So, so I think that, you know, after further consideration, it made sense to to first have the organizational study to figure out what yeah. we should actually hire for a long-term position, and yeah. then that will drive the, the no, you know. No, tiptoeing through the tulips, I'm sorry. We, we had an agreement in writing of yeah. what we were supposed to do, yeah. and we didn't do it. We have not done it yet. Six months in, the original agreement was six months, yeah. and during that six months, we were supposed to do a search, and now six months later, you're telling me that we're going to try to restructure the whole. So I mean, I mean, my opinion on it, and what we, you know, yeah. agreed to before, is it made sense to to do these things in a certain order. So I mean, regardless, no, that's right? That's not true. That's absolutely not true. Okay, no, we, we can look at the, the minutes of these conversations. Like this is what well, we decided on. We can look at the minutes from the original agreement. Yeah. And the original agreement, what it what it said. Yeah. What. What did the original agreement say? I when, when we initial initially we had to find someone in short time because we had no no town administrator. Debbie was brought in to, to fill that role, apply for it. We hired Debbie to do that after a bunch of candidates. Mm -hmm. I'd like to point out also that Debbie's done a great job. In That's besides the point. Okay, you're you're yeah. muddying the water here. Okay, Let's yeah. stick to what we're talking about. So I mean, George, I guess we recently extended her contract out, right? 
We voted for that. We did because we've been sitting on our, you know what? Yeah. For six months, and we haven't done what we were supposed to do. Yep. Okay. I think things times have changed. Things change between then and now. I mean. But but what changed? Nothing changed. That's more BS. I I think things have changed. Well, I mean, not. Not that had anything to do with this. Yeah. Okay. okay so, so I guess I, I see what you're saying, George. Totally agree. The situation we're in now, right, yeah. is that Debbie's contract is extended to 630. So we do need her to be appointed to these positions. What happens at 630? Because we still have not even begun the search that we agreed to do. And the original agreement that's in writing stipulated all of these things. Okay. Okay. And we're not two to one today, so I feel very comfortable discussing it. Yeah. No. No, that okay. I, I get your point. Okay, so what are we doing in the next few weeks? I will be going forward the Collins Group study, which will then lead us But that's not a search. That that will that will lead to what from my perspective, right? Why would we do a search for a position that we might not even need? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. When, when this is a $140,000 a year position. This is a position that we've had for a long time. This, this, was, this position was terminated under very uh, unusual circumstances, let me say. Okay. okay. Do you want me to go into that? I'm uh, be, fine. Be careful how far you stray away from the agenda. Yeah. Just okay. Well, the reason we're talking about it is that we're, we're extending uh, what we should be doing. But the question is, so what you're telling me today, though, and then I'll, I'll quit right there, mm -hmm. is that we're going to basically not do anything about all of the agreements we've had in the past, and we're going on a totally different path. Okay. Right. We don't know the path we're going to go into yet, but exactly. the, the, but the it, Collins Group study will, will provide that path. Right. Uh, the Collins Group study was not meant to study the town administrator. It was meant to study the structure of all the employees. Which is mm -hmm. led by, but regardless, yeah. we, we disagree okay. on that, that's fine. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, So, I mean, the reason I bring it up is because we're putting Miss Petty on a whole bunch of other commissions and what have you that I personally think <coughs> that, uh, we'd be better served to do it a little bit differently. So I think I, unless there's, there was one that had, was time sensitive. Yes. So which one was that? Well, that I think they're all kind of time sensitive. No, I mean, one in particular. So yeah. in... I, I was appointed to all of these through March 13th, my original contract date. Mm -hmm. My contract was extended to June 30th. If I'm not reappointed to these boards, then I, I cannot vote on them. The Health Insurance Advisory Board was the one that, what the committee was the one that was time sensitive, but that meeting was today and I didn't vote. I participated but didn't vote. So, but just know that I cannot vote on any of these uh, boards if I'm not appointed. Although I have a contract to work through the through June thirtieth. Okay. All right. Well, I just wanted to bring up the fact on how we're doing things. And they were not we're not doing things that we had agreed to. This is a little bit different. Uh, but since this is my last meeting, I. I will just leave it for you guys to sort out. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna make a motion to accept any of this. Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept these the, the appointments from the agenda. We need to read them out. Okay. Uh, the following appointments: so Deborah Petty to Tax Increment Financing Board, effective three twenty eight to six thirty twenty two. Deborah Petty to Chief Procurement Officer, Ethics Commission, Interim Town Administrator, Economic Development Committee, EMA Public Safety, Health Insurance Advisory Committee, Local Emergency Planning Committee, Community Ag Aggregation Delegate, 
CMAS committee, CERPED uh, Regional Economic Strategy Committee, Bylaw Committee, CERPED Commissioner, CERPED Joint Strategy Committee, CERPED Joint Transportation Building Committee. Uh, all effective 328 to 63022. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, George. So now we'll move on to the regular board of selectmen agenda. So first we have approved the minutes from 3-7-2022. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Uh, I, I haven't read them, so. Okay, so we can table that. Do we have, we have to approve the minutes within a certain time period? Do we know? Three meetings or 30 days, so I can do it on 4 -11. Okay, all right. 4 -11. Table that. All right, now we have the presentation. Um, of, of, regarding becoming a member of the Bristol Plymouth Technical High School from Superintendent Dr. Alexander Magalhaes. Is, is he here? No. He's not here yet. He was expected around okay. 6. So. All right. So we'll push that off. And uh, Weekly warrants, uh, 041 to uh, 056. Do I have a motion to approve the, the weekly warrant warrants? Um, Oh, okay. But with the warrant itself. You're just approving the numbers that the accountant needs you to have for available okay. warrants. Oh, okay. So I don't have the backup for it here. Okay. All right. Motion made. Uh, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, discussion and vote on the Boy Scouts uh, request to hold a fishing derby at the town beach on 4 10 2022. Um, motion to approve. All right. Um, I'll. Uh, I'll make that motion, or so you made that motion? Yeah. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There you guys go. I'm assuming you guys are the Boy Scouts? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have fun with that. All right, thank you. All right. So um, vote to close the annual town meeting and special town meeting warrant for submissions, effective 3-28-22. Do I have a motion for that? Uh, where is it? Yeah, they're, they're in the pack, yeah. Okay. So Actually, they're not in the pack, no, are they? No, uh, it's just for submissions, and then I'll compile them all, and they'll come to the next meeting like they normally do. Yep. Okay. So, motion made. All right, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Discussion and vote uh, to approve the agreement between Town of Freetown and Mid-City Scrap Iron and Salvage Co., and this is for Mid-City to remove... Um, bunch of salvage metal from the dump, right? Mickey from the transfer station is here, so. Yeah, is that what it is, Mickey? It's so they're gonna bring it if there's any CFCs inside of the container that what the liability is, and that's what the agreement is. Okay, yeah. Make I look, us aware of our liability. Perfect. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so I'll, I'll issue a motion to approve that agreement. Motion made. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Discuss, discussion vote on the um, labor materials proposal from uh, BBS Tech for the police station and Chief, I'm assuming you are here for that one, among other things. Yeah, so those items were placed before the police subcommittee that voted to proceed with them. Then it made its way up to the administrator, and uh, I believe you previously have seen the list of items. Uh, well, many of those things have been taken care of, some things are still outstanding, but essentially lighting up uh, this repairing the light uh, positions on the sign, um, putting up a monitor and dispatch, uh, hooking up electric and cable to the monitor in the break room, putting some uh, keypads outside of two doors. I think that's the one this is specific to, right? This is for the, this be, is yeah. for the, so, so this is for the doors. That's 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 why you have BBS. In yeah, that. okay. Yeah. All right, great. And you know, any, any other notes on this? That, you know? It's for the doors, uh, which is proprietary or sole source, if you will. Um, it's just to sign the quote so we can get them ordered. And then the second one is for the labor to actually install the doors. It's separate from the electrical contract, which already has been awarded. Gotcha. Okay. So with that, uh, so I'll, I'll entertain a motion uh, to, oh, or sorry, <laughs> um, to approve the materials and labor for the BBS tech for the police agency. Okay. 
George Eaton. Aye. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, discussion of vote to amend the fuel storage license for DevCon Innovation Way LLC to change the address from zero Innovation Way um, plot number 236, lot 6.02. To 36 individual way, a Sona Mass 02702. This is because the assessors gave them an actual address now. So it's just a trans, uh, an amendment to the already assigned um, license. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the amendment. Motion. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Discussion on the transfer station hours. So it looks like we were able to come to some a new agreement on uh, when we can have the transfer station open the weekends, uh, starting in you know seasonally. So um, the new hours will be Tuesday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wednesday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday from how about eight, should we start in March or April? Does anyone? April might make more sense when people are cleaning up their yard. I would think April. April. So we'll do April through October, um, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. for Sunday. So we do have to, we will have to hire an additional staff person for this. Um, so I don't know, any questions from yeah, George? I, why do we need uh, more staff? Um, I thought we were going to start those. Sunday hours in July. That was my understanding, not in April. We're going to work the Tuesday, Saturday from now till we get the next, mm -hmm. till July, correct? Yeah, let me think about this. Well, it's because we don't have the funding, right, to yes. add new staff right now until the next budget. So yeah, so start. exactly. So so that will be for, I guess, yeah. next, next next yeah. April, it will start, yeah. it will start this July. Right? Yes. yes. This July. This July, then, next April. It, yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> but in total, this, you're going to be open more hours now? Is that right? Um, not more, just extended on the Tuesday and Saturday for anybody that would need to come in that feels slighted by the Sunday closure. And you're closing early on Sunday. Yes, yeah. currently it's not open at all on Sunday. Right. Okay, so we'll, we will then. now be open uh, on Sunday as well. In July. In July, going from this year, after that, it's going to start mm -hmm. in April. So this is mostly for the fall cleanup, mm -hmm. you know, or sorry, spring cleanup people want to do. We'll give them an extra day so they can do that. That seems to be the highest demand from what we've heard. Okay. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to approve this new hours. Motion made. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What's that? Hello. Yeah, so we did skip over you. We'll come back to you now. If that works for you. Yeah, do you guys need you a sec take any technology kind of requirements here? Yeah, I'll do that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump down to agenda item fifteen. So this is the uh, while they get ready. So this is the discussion and vote. Um, on the host community agreement between the town of Freetown and Green Collar Cannabis. So, is there anyone from Green Collar want to speak on this? I mean, uh, yeah, I I've left through it. I went back and forth uh, through the town council to arrive upon a mutually agreeable document. Uh, my clients are good with the text as drafted, so other than that, nothing to add. I, I reviewed it, it looks very fair. Um, look forward to you guys operating in town. Uh, George, do you have any questions? All right, so with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, host community agreement with Green Collar Cannabis. Motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Easy peasy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
What's that? Can you do Christmas? You know what else? Can you do um, um, 16 and make 17 just in case we lose people? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to move on to agenda item 16. Um, vote and approve the fire station boiler replacement bid. So that is for me on page 66. So um, we got three bids in. The uh, lowest bid came from uh, performance plumbing and heating at $28,824. I am allowed to say that, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I'll entertain a motion to approve um, the boiler bid with performance, plumbing, and heating for the fire station boiler replacement. Motion made. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then 17 is just approving the contract. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the contract between the town of Freetown and performance, plumbing, and heating. Do I have a motion for that? It's just it's a uh, Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And Trevor, the one thing that the other thing I have to have done is 13, just uh, the insurance rates. Okay. Because it should be done by April 9th. Yep, so and that is on. I, yeah. I, uh, so, so this is, I'll question. just, I'll quit. So the, this is vote on the health insurance rates for fiscal 2023. Debbie, do you want to explain anything? Yeah, we need to so do? Um, every year, the Maya or whoever we put the um, health insurance bid to, they give us the renewal rates for the health insurance for the employees of the town, for which the town pays 75% on, uh, and the employees pay 25% on most of it. So it can be a little different on the PPO. Mm -hmm. The rates went up 2.76%. Um, the Health Insurance Advisory Committee looked at different alternatives and voted uh, to recommend that the selectmen can keep the same um, health insurance plan options with the increase of 2.76%. So the rates would be uh, under the HML Blue, which is our HMO plan, for an individual plan will be $943.63. For a family plan, $2,472.39, and those are per month. And for the PPO plan, which is our Blue Care Elect Preferred, for an individual plan, it would be $1,273.46 per month. And for a family plan, $3,165.90 per month. So I need an approval from the Board of Selectmen to move forward with that. So I'll entertain a motion to approve those rates as stated. Motion made. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I, don't let me forget about 14. I skipped that one. We, we skipped 12, too. 12, okay. Well, that. that's my the previous page, so. Yeah. I'll just make it. All right. So are the folks from BP ready to go? First, good evening. Uh, thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alex Magapay, superintendent at Bristol Plymouth, also a resident of Freetown. So it's great to be here at a, a familiar place to those other towns. Um, and my understanding is you want to be more about where we are um, as far as uh, the student, uh, Freetown students as well as where our project is. So I think I'm going to start off with just with a project. See where we are with the project and when it's going to be completed, and then uh, we can go forward with the, uh, you know, the Italian students as uh, members of the Crystal Plymouth uh, District. We will do that, and uh, if there's any other questions, we'll just answer questions. Great. Yeah, and I, yeah. I'll just like to note. So we do have a public hearing schedule at seven. So you know, I'm sure there's some questions here. So we just have to make sure we kind of keep it limited, so we can have the public hearing at seven. Sure. Thank you. All right. Um, so we'll begin with, uh, oh, with me is uh, Chad Green. He's from, uh, he's our OPM, uh, Owners Project Manager, and uh, our architect, Steph Stimislaski, as the architect. They'll be going over the, uh, the PowerPoint as well. Uh, we'll just begin with, um, I, I guess I'll take over the first couple of slides. Sure. So um, 
we've been with this project. This project actually started in um, 2018. Uh, in 2018, we got uh, accepted into the pipeline of the MSBA. Uh, the, the school that we're in now is, uh, it was built in 1970. There was, there's been some uh, challenges, and as we've grown, uh, it started off with a school that was about 700 students, and now has 1,300. And, uh, and it's also, um, the way it was built, it doesn't really meet a lot of the, uh, the educational needs that uh, required by the uh, Department of Ed. So in 2019, um, we got a project manager, which is a PMA, Chad, and uh, we went through the architects in 2020. Uh, we found the architect, we did what we call a feasibility, what would it cost? We did uh, quite a few plans, you know, could have been an addition, a renovation, uh, all the way through a new, new school. And we took all the, uh, those studies and see what worked with the, our educational plan. In uh, 2021, we came up with a schematic plan, which is kind of brought here. I know it's probably the book, uh, book back there, probably can't see it, but you're welcome to come down and take a look at it. Also, it's on our website. And then um, just recently, uh, we, you know, uh, we got approved to move forward with the project by going through all the towns and the elections and, and so forth, and uh, I, got, I think approved on March 5th, 20, 20, uh, 22nd. And these are the feasibility study overviews, and I'm going to pass it on to Tina. Yeah. So like the superintendent said, we had multiple options to try to figure out what was the best option for Bristol Plymouth. Um, we had a base repair, which was, you know, many, many millions of dollars just to bring it up to code, basically. And then we looked at um, a new addition, uh, renovations. You know, it's difficult to renovate a school with uh, vocational programs because it's hard to find uh, swing space for those programs. So um, we did look at some of those. The construction timeline was like five years on them because you have to move kids around as you renovated spaces. And then we ultimately ended with the um, new option being the most cost effective and the best educationally. We also looked at multiple different kinds of populations. Um, their current population of 1300 all the way up to 1540. And we ended up being somewhere in the middle. Um, we didn't want to build the school too big. It's already a big price tag for everybody. So the more kids you add into it, the bigger the school you need. Um, and we looked at a lot of different locations on the existing site. So we had a, a whole bunch of goals for the project that the educators had set up in the administration, and we used those goals to kind of weigh the pros and cons of each of those options that we developed, and that's how we came up to the point where we wanted to do the new addition, or the new, the new construction. Um, some of the visions for the new school was to create a student-specific space, uh, a hub, that's their library and their cath, kind of the central heart of the school. Um, they wanted to create vocational clusters, so like programs would be located together in the new building. They wanted connections between the educational and the vocational spaces. The students really learn by doing, so if they could understand the connection between their academic programs and what they're learning in their shops, then the program would be much more successful. Um, we, of course, wanted to increase sizes. One of the major problems with the school right now is that it's out of space. They just need more space. Um, we wanted to encourage the community engagement, so all the public-facing uh, vocational programs like culinary and cosmetology would really be welcoming and easy to find. Um, and we wanted to create natural light in all the spaces. Right now, a lot of the classroom space is in the middle of the school. They sort of backfill courtyards to gain space. Um, and so none of those classrooms have natural light. So the new school, all the classrooms will have natural light. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had enough space for SPED programs and small group for pullout and an auditorium for um, distance learning and also for gathering the whole school. Currently there isn't an auditorium um, in the school. And then we wanted to make sure that the gym was right sized for wellness programs. Um, the new building allows us to have an improved layout. So we're gonna be able to uh, match up the academic spaces with the vocational clusters like I talked about and also have all of the hub spaces sort of in the central location of the school. So the auditorium, the gym, the cafe, the library, all centrally located. Um, these are some of the clusters that I keep mentioning. Um, there's a service cluster, a business cluster, um, manufacturing and engineering, construction, transportation, and health. And so again, it's easier to kind of zone the school now that it's gonna be all new. We'll have public spaces that people can come and use after hours, and we'll be able to lock down all of the academic spaces in the school. So the way we come up with the size of the school and what kind of spaces are in it is based on Two things. 
the MSBA program, which looks like this spreadsheet here, um, they basically put this together and you type in the number of students that you have and it kind of spits out a program of you need X number of classrooms, you need X number of science labs, and it gives you square footages for those. So they do this because they want to have all of their schools across the district be equally sized, everybody has equity. Um, and then for vocational programs, we also look at the DESC and they tell us the minimum sizes that you need to have for vocational spaces. And together with that and meeting with the educators, we figure out how to right size the shops. Um, it's going to be a very sustainable and resilient new building. Um, we are doing um, the LEED accreditation and um, some of the things that we're looking at is under energy, reducing the energy use. We'll do that through LED lighting. We'll make sure that we have a super efficient envelope um, we'll, and we're looking at clean and green energy sources um, for the building right now. And we'll also have EV charging stations for cars and hopefully buses at some point. Um, we're looking at health and well being. So the new school will have uh, positive indoor air quality and acoustics. Right now, the acoustics from space to space are really poor, but in the new building, they'll be you know, much better. Um, thermal comfort and control, you'll be able to kind of, uh, make sure that your space is the right temperature for you access to light and views like I was talking about. There'll be windows in all the educational spaces. And we're gonna make sure that we're using healthy materials in the building. So we're looking to get rid of red, red list materials and chemicals. Um, we're gonna be reducing water consumption and managing the stormwater on the site. Some of you may know the site is pretty wet, has a lot of wetlands. Um, we are looking at ways to reuse rainwater um, on site for irrigation potentially, and also for things like toilet flushing. Um, and then in terms of waste, construction waste, we'll obviously try to minimize, and then we'll work with the district to um, recycle and compost. So this is a shot of the new building. It's going to be built on what is the football field currently. And in the foreground, those fields that you're seeing, that's where the existing building is today. So that building will stay in place when we build this new facility, and then as a second phase of construction, we'll demo, it, demo that and then put in the new fields. The parking and all of the outbuildings in front of those are all existing and we're gonna to try to maintain those as much as possible to save money. Um, this is sort of the site plan layout. You can see that the new football field is gonna get built along uh, Route 24 at the bottom of the site. And then we'll be putting in those new fields um, as I talked about. There's also gonna be the um, two site access that we have currently, so that'll be maintained. And we are working right now with our traffic engineers to really look at how traffic works on the site today and the best way to move people through. Um, so these are the floor plans. There's two floors. Um, the color coding has to do with those clusters that I was talking about. Um, the orange are the academic classrooms and science labs. The yellow is the hub space. Um, so that has the auditorium and the CAF um, and the media center upstairs. Green is administrative spaces. Um, purple are the public facing uh, shops, so that'll be culinary, cosmetology, graphics, and um, early childhood. And then the blue at the back of the site is automotive and construction. They all have work yards that open up to sort of the forested area on the site, so they'll have a nice fenced in area to be doing their stuff outside and also kind of keep all of their gear and stuff and it'll be all neat and tucked away. Um, the blue in the front are the um, CAD CAM robotics and engineering, and that'll um, we built it on two floors to really conserve the site, but also to reduce the cost so it makes um, the foundations less expensive um, and the roof area less expensive if you can get more things on two floors. Um, on the upper level, the yellow is the gymnasium, and the upper level, the auditorium and the media center. Um, and then we have sort of the business cluster uh, in the lower left-hand corner, and then in the front corner, we have the health. And again, the orange is the academic spaces. All of those are kind of ranged around a courtyard, um, and that will have outdoor educational space. I think one of the things we learned during the pandemic is outdoor education space is really great to have, so we're planning for that in a super rotation. So this is kind of a zoomed in view of the axon of the building. It is huge. It's about twice the size of the existing building, so we're working on ways to make it more um, scaled on the site so as a pedestrian you have a good experience when you're walking around the building it doesn't feel like it's you know quite as big as it is um, we are doing some studies and materials um, and we've just started this we have another 
about 15 months of design. So we are looking at um, very durable, inexpensive materials like masonry and stone for the building that will last more than 50 years. And I think right now we have the interior walkthrough. Again, this is just very um, preliminary because it's the study phase. This has you coming in the main entrance. Um, you're looking out, you can see the courtyard to your right. There's a conference room, a think tank there. Then we walk into the cafeteria, which is open. A lot of natural light from up above. And we have acoustic baffles up on the ceiling to provide that nice acoustic quality. And if you go up to the main, up the main stair to the second floor, it takes you up to the gym. So the gym still feels really public, even though it's on the second floor. And all of that space is really easy to lock down from all the academic areas. Um, so the school can be open in the evenings for athletic events or events in the auditorium, and the public can use the school as well. And that's looking out to a roof deck um, off of the cafeteria. So again, this is still pretty schematic level, just really at the point we did this, we were looking at different materials and getting a good cost estimate for those materials, but the design is going to have another 12 months to 15 months of refinement. So that's showing the main entrance with an area for parent drop-off, bus drop-off, showing the brick facade, the orange is the brick in this case. And then that's the public facing um, spaces that I was talking about, so culinary, cosmetology, the pre-K center, you can see the um, playground on the right, the bottom right hand side. All of that will have visitor parking in front of it and really clear signage so when you come on the street or when you come from the um, Route 140 onto the site, you'll see these public facing um, shops right when you get there so you know, you'll know where you're heading. One of the things about the existing school you kind of come in from the back of the school, you see the loading dock, you don't really know where you're going if you're looking for the restaurant or the, or the cosmetology. Um, so yeah. I think I might jump over to Todd now to talk a little bit about cost. Great, thank you. Um, so okay, let's talk a, a bit about cost and uh, the MSBA grant program that this project's undertaking. Um, so, so over, that submission, the feasibility study to the MSBA, there are three submissions. Uh, cost has also always been number one, continues to be at the forefront of the building committee's agenda. Um, so the, the final approved by the Massachusetts School Building Authority cost is $305 million. Uh, that's down from $325 million at preliminary design. Uh, we hope that as we continue to refine the design, we can find opportunities for savings uh, as we move through the process. Uh, the district share of that $305 million is $180 million. So the MSBA reimbursement projection is $125 million coming from the state. Uh, the state is funded by 1% of the 6% sales tax, goes in the fund, and then a state agency determines uh, which communities will be eligible to receive those funds. Uh, so looking at a comparison across the options, uh, so if we focus on what that district share of each of the scenarios would be, uh, you can see on the far left, if we were to repair the existing building, we were looking at $137 million. Uh, so that existing building is around 200,000 square feet. It's half the size of the proposed new building. Um, as Superintendent Medley has stated earlier, it was designed for an enrollment of around 700 students. Uh, so it really didn't fit the educational programming needs. Uh, we also studied an addition renovation option. So this is the most cost effective of the multiple ad rentals that were studied. Uh, where this becomes challenging is the vocational nature. So you need to find a place to temporarily house these vocational shops. Uh, it's a lot more than just putting a, a classroom in a modular trailer. We're talking about recreating culinary kitchens and automotive shops and much more involved programs. Uh, so that has a cost component too, which unfortunately is not eligible for reimbursement under the MSBA program. Uh, so the new build option uh, is the one that we went with. We have the MSBA's full support, uh, estimated district share of $130 million. Uh, so that is split amongst the member communities based on enrollment. Um, 
the way the original agreement is currently structured, uh, the, the school would bond the, their share over 30 years. And then each year, the principal and interest payments for the bonds are divided up amongst the member communities based on enrollment that each community has in the school that year. Uh, so the hypothetical that you see right here has Freetown, uh, assuming you are 5% of the school's population. Um, so the design enrollments, 1,434 students, so you do 5% of that, roughly 70 students, 70 something students. Uh, at that hypothetical assumption, you're looking at a free town share over those 30 years of nine and a half million dollars. Uh, looking where we are compared to other similar projects, so there are four very large vocational projects in the MSBA's pipeline with Bristol Plummer. Uh, you can see them on the screen there. So cost per square foot, Bristol Plummer is the lowest cost per square foot. Um, there are other projects that are in the process of being invited into the program. Uh, one of them is actually Old Colony in Rochester. So they are right now where Bristol Plymouth was oh, around three years ago in the MSBA's process. So they'll be going through a similar effort in the very near future. Uh, one of the items that we do for the MSBA and for the district's financial advisors in order to figure out the ideal bonding scenario is we uh, take the project schedule and we map it out over time. And we look at not only what can might be expended in any given month, but we look at what the state will reimburse as the state reimburses on a month to month basis. So every month we submit all the invoices for that month. We go to the state's audit department, the state cuts a reimbursement check. Uh, so what this does is it allows us to, um, to maximize the, the bonding efficiency, if you will. Uh, we do not need to bond the full $305 million total project cost. The district only needs to bond their share in order to keep the project moving forward. Uh, tax impact projection, so um, again, this is using that same assumption where roughly 5% of the students uh, are Freetown students, and we can see Freetown the uh, third row down. And uh, for the 2021 average single family home with an assessed value of $363,000, uh, your rate impacts estimated at 35 cents per thousand. Um, that translates to uh, an estimated quarterly impact of $31.48 on the average single family house in Freetown. Uh, annual impact is $125.99. So that's uh, what the impact would look like off this, this project. Um, with that, I'll turn it back over to Dr. Nava Hayes. And <coughs> so that's where we are with the, uh, the new project. And now, um, the assess assessment, the full assessment wouldn't start till uh, 2025, but I mean, my physics fan is maybe knows off, off the sitting now, but that assessment wouldn't come in. Now, as far as, I guess the other question they asked me to speak to is about the regional agreement. Uh, right now, uh, as we we just met um, this past Thursday, and we are updating, um, basically what we're trying to do is with, with the SCNA legal department is clarifying some of the language of the old language. In fact, I have, I brought with me, um, I actually have three, so give me one make copies, but I have the original agreement with our uh, districts. In fact, you guys are once here, but then I think you can set these kind of part up. But it's there. So what you, what, with Desi, we're just trying to clean it up, uh, update it with the um, the new uh, laws that may have changed in 1970. And also the, the biggest part is clarification. We want to make sure that when it's being read that my understanding is the same understanding as someone else. So we keep going back and forth. I was uh, hoping that we had this um, document completed last last month at our um, school committee meeting so that I can bring it to them. So, uh, it wasn't done. I'm still hopeful that it'll be completed. And so the next steps will be is that once it's, um, it's approved by Jesse and the language is approved by the legal department, I'll bring it to the school committee uh, as you know, the school committee has, um, two years in a row, has um, agreed to bring in uh, Freetown students as non-residents, uh, which is, I think, the first time we've ever done that, because uh, we do have a waiver list for other residents, but knowing that, uh, you know, a letter was sent for um, working out of, to come into our district. So the next step will be once they, um, they approve it, that regional agreement, it will now go to all the towns to also uh, agree including free town, the town of Freetown, we'll also get that new uh, regional agreement, and then it gets voted 
amongst other towns, uh, including uh, the city of Time. And uh, it has to be uh, unanimous vote. Has to be everyone has to agree uh, to, in order to be a uh, member of the uh, Christopher uh, Regional Technical School District. So once that's completed, uh, we can still allow students to come in um, to our district as any other uh, the way they're doing it now, and you'd be uh, assessed the very similar to what you're being assessed now, uh, depending on what the tuition is, and that's usually guided by the Department of Ed. Uh, Tuition rate, uh, as well as so once that's completed, um, you, you it wouldn't take. Uh, it goes through the process. Uh, you, it'll take effect uh, July first, twenty twenty three, where then you would need a school committee member to buy year to be on on the board. So we're still looking at that time period as, as far as that goes. Um, but unfortunately, I wish I had more better you know news regarding the uh, regional uh, agreement. But I'm still waiting. Any Quick questions? Qu I have a question. So it looks like Freetown has, you know, in its projections, 5% um, of the total population of the school, right, of enrollment. Yeah. Is that number um, a, you know, is that based on the population of each town? Um, or, you know, how did that number get uh, assessed? Well, the, the, the percentage will, will change every year. Uh, Just, it's, so, okay, so it's, it's not like you have to, 5% no, I, I, I are going to be allocated to Freetown. No, no. Wait, wait, there's, there's uh, our original agreement. You, you have it. We don't have a um, a quota. Okay. Each town. It's basically we take all the applications that come in, uh, and then we just you know the the department that looks at the applications and, and admissions and do the interviews and so forth. They do their thing and they just pick. And we don't know what towns. You know, we we try not to uh, look at that. Uh, the reason why you guys have a quota is because um, you know we do have folks that. Um, from other towns that are not coming in, and so we, the school committee decided they just wanted to give you just enough to, you know, I know you went through a year without having a vocational, uh, yeah, you know, uh, experience. So, um, you know, they settled with 15 students because we they didn't want to strip too much of the uh, others that couldn't be able to make it. So, um, do you have a quote? Otherwise, you don't have to lose that quote. Okay, thank you. So, could the long range plan? be that we take our students out of Old Colony and go here? Well, I, I, I think by the time this sets up, you won't have any more students. So you, you don't have any students from Old Colony anyway right now. Oh, we don't? No. We, 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 we do. It's only seniors right They're now. They're graduating, right? but they have, they, right. there's no new freshmen starting. Right, no freshmen, no sophomores. Yeah. yeah, I think right. Or no juniors either. Because yeah. we got the freshmen and the sophomores. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm just sharing with them what so, their current enrollment is because we're still in that transition phase. Right, yes. right. I, so there's, I believe they, you know, they only have seniors there at this juniors point. Juniors and seniors. 21. I thought, they, I thought they had a year that they didn't have anybody going in yet. Class so it's our sophomore class right now. So what I, Mr. Mathis, if I may, yeah. just, to Mr. Mayor, just, to, just to speak to it because it goes beyond kind of his jurisdiction oh, kind of the VP, so I just want to give you the kind of big picture. It would also answer your question relative to can we, you know, what's that 5% look like? Yeah. If you look historically at vocational needs for Freetown residents, this is what this diagram shows, that you have a small percentage of students that historically are going to Bristol Agricultural High School, that will still be in effect. You and 23 other communities will continue to have that option for those students. It's always typically a smaller percentage historically, even yeah. though they just went through, as you know, a new construction project, and it has for, to see the numbers there reflected across the board. Mm -hmm. You see Old Colony still listed there because we're in the process of phasing out those last two classes. So you can see the junior and seniors. Ms. Bailey's point, by the time this construction project starts, all of the Freetown residents, if they choose a vocational option, would be attending Bristol Plymouth and or Bristol Agriculture. And just to answer Mr. Matthews, your question uh, to Ms. Mayors, if you think of that 5% piece, mm -hmm. that was also comparable to Rehoboth's numbers, pretty consistent with about what the vocational needs have been for Freetown students. Okay. Typically between 70 and 80 students have been quote vocational students. Whether it had been an old colony at one point in Bristol, I, it will now be Bristol Plymouth if this goes through. We'll become the eight, when I say we, I'm saying we collectively, yeah. the town of Freetown, yeah. will be the eighth city and or town to join the district. They have made that accommodation for these past two years 
to allow for non-resident um, you know, students to attend as we make this transition, and then we'd be formal if the votes go through. So I just wanted to share those numbers with you because it does kind of capture that question. Yeah, absolutely. Is, you can, what I would simply say, you can imagine the, that 20 and 25 under where it says Old County being VP students in yeah. the future. Right, that's, that's typically when we would number. For example, this year, we had 38, 36 applicants, 36 Freetown students apply. Does it mean they've all, they're all gonna be selected and or choose? In some instances, families are keeping open their options, are looking at Bristol Aggie, they end up at a Pontiac, historically 20 to 25 students. Thus, you kind of have that 5% and maybe a few more students, and then you'd be assessed based on that number of students moving forward. So you, you, yeah, that, so your, the assessment is based on, it's a function of the number yeah, of students, it's number so, of so, so it's gonna fluctuate every year. Right? Okay, that's, that, that's and, what and, I was, I wanna make sure it was a variable cost and not like a fixed cost there. And I think the confidence you can have, Mr. Neff, is, is that if you look historically at the need, you can kind of, you obviously can't ever predict exactly how many students, yeah. but you can look at a pretty, pretty large piece to see how many students attended Old Colony and Bristol Ivy, and that, that will be in Bristol Plymouth. Yeah, and I think it's probably important to note, too, I know Old Colony is a pretty old school itself, so I'm sure they're going to have to do something similar to this. Well, they're in the pipeline. Yeah. The, where I it takes a while. You know, I almost, you know, like I said, we're, uh, we, we got a notice in uh, 2018 in November. In mm -hmm. 2019, that's when it, it really started. It takes over a year to get, you know, all the documentation out to Papa Dead, and then things have to be approved, so it takes a while. Then, then you have to get the, your, your architects involved, and then, you know, you have to do it takes a little while. It takes another probably another four or five years before they're where we are today. Yeah, you're uh, you're standing in a in a building we just built, so right. You know, so, so it takes a little while. You know, we're working with uh, you know, Papa Bed and, and MSBA. Yeah, they they, they really want to um, make sure they you know everything's checked off and uh, and so you know that we do our homework and you know we sharp that pencil as well. So um, it's kind of where we are with the regional agreement, but but that number was arbitrary number. We kind of used that number as a you know a kind of Free, free Town Berkeley type of deal. Yeah. Um, so. I can see that. Anyone have any questions? Yep, yeah, sure. I just have two questions. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, first off, the, the assessment and the presentation that you presented today, I'm assuming that went to the other seven number towns. Is it the same exact presentation, or did you adjust it for Free Towns numbers for this specific presentation? This, this, this one in particular? Yes. This one we adjusted for you guys, for this, because we didn't have Free Town there. So I just we, wanted we, to make sure that the other towns weren't voting on the assumption that Freetown was no, the only vote. No, we threw this in as so that you are able to see what it looks like for your purpose. But when we uh, when we went through this process with the other towns, Freetown was never mentioned because I couldn't I couldn't mention it because honestly I still can't mention it because you're not approved. You know, yeah. And, you know, if you want to be approved, you know, you're gonna have to do your homework too. You're gonna have to, you know, hopefully uh, reach out to other communities and, and, and so forth. Uh, I would think that. Uh, being in a project like this, you have a better chance of coming in because you know they may want to need some help to uh, support the building. And that is what I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm guessing. But, uh, but other than that, it's a. Yeah, yeah through, through the chair, I just want to publicly thank you, Alex, because you've been phenomenal throughout this entire process. Um, from the moment we reached out to you when everything happened with Will Colony to now. Um, so just publicly thank you. And I think it's also worth noting that while we are sending kids to Bristol Plymouth on a tuition basis, through our research, it, it was found that, that it's, Freetown's actually saving money in that respect. It is cheaper to send our kids to Bristol Plymouth than it is to Old Colony. Yeah. Um, and they also offer seven more shops. So um, watching this presentation, I'm, I'm so excited um, for the, the prospect of Freetown being able to um, get on board with, with DP. Um, but just, uh, and, and lean on us too when it comes to this point, but we're gonna have to get out and educate folks and, and get the word out there and really sell this to the community. Yeah. Um, because it is important. So that's that's all I have. But, but I just wanted to thank Alex publicly because as a town resident, he knows the kids that he's getting from Freetown, um, how awesome they are. Um, so just wanted to thank him. Yeah. Thank you. Thank um, I was also on the school committee as well, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, to, to piggyback on, on tuition, uh, we actually were looking, I don't know if you, you were going to have to ha ask that question, but Nadine Rose has uh, exact numbers what would cost you going there versus coming here. Do you have those numbers for, for, right. for a person? So the non-resident right now, tuition rates, um, Old Colony, 
is currently at 18,679 per student, and the first diploma is at 14,851 per student. Wow. So it, that's what we're currently billing those 15 students at. Does that include transportation? That does not. Okay, because I, I know that's another pretty in expensive. Either, in either instance, it would not. It would not. Yeah, okay, so those are. That would be an added cost regardless of what location was. Oh. Good to know. I have a non. I, I, I have a non money question. You know, I can't stand the exit from the campus, and we tried to get you a traffic light that didn't work. Didn't work. Didn't work. Are we, when we focus on this new footprint and everything, going to be able to siphon kids so they go another way rather than zooming out to 140, 90 to nothing? Well, if you still think pull, I did write a letter to the governor. I'm going to bring a driveway to the zone boulevard where the lights are so they can go. But we're changing those lights. Oh, OK. Maybe that's why they sent me back. I never got an answer. But um, but yeah, we're, 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 they're doing the study now. Um, it is. Traffic study, right? Traffic study. And, study. and, and then, Unfortunately, I don't even know what's going on. There's a lot of, you know, I, it may be easier now to move because I, I did put more ramps. We are, the new F ramp goes into the station there and 140 is going to be a little bit widened there. Yeah. Um, and all the, the lights are going to be adaptive signaling. So when there's queuing, supposedly they know what they're doing, which is why I wanted the light there. Yeah, that's but, right. Um, we, we'll still work on I just, for, for the purpose of everyone's information here, when the kids get out, at, I don't remember what time it is, but it's mid-afternoon. They get right there at the intersection at 140 across from Home Depot, and it's a challenge for them to exit the campus. It's yep. a huge challenge. Yeah. And they're young, and they get impatient, and there are an awful lot of near misses there. Mm -hmm. So I know you're looking at this, because you also siphon them the other way. Yeah, we do. We try to siphon them, and we try to tell them, don't always take a right, don't take a left. Right, go right. Two lanes. So I just want people to be aware that with the new station there, and with additional development, because that whole parcel where the station is, now they're looking at a whole kind of mixed-use residential area, right. there's going to be a lot more traffic. Yeah, yeah so that's worth I, That's just FYI, maybe we should have a chat. But I think that you know there's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening in that general area that will impact traffic flows, traffic counts, and peak period impact. Right. Mm. Everybody would still remembers the old uh, 140, all that was the Bob Jones and that I was remember. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what she's in and out, but now that uh, has all that. I like that. Well, I just have one quick question, and I think just a quick uh, opinion base as well. So perhaps, is there any way that you could forward us this presentation oh, to us for immediately? Um, I mean, again, these numbers, you know, again, they're preliminary. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, the, the bonds person, they did it, they, again, they gave us a certain rate to right. change. Yeah. Um, sure, I'd, I'd be happy to. But it know. gives us the overall project cost, and those numbers are also important to data. Yeah. And my second thing, just regarding transportation, Trev, I'd argue that we might be some savings there in transportation as well. Yeah. Just given where BP is and where P-Town is situated, mm -hmm. um, probably a lot cheaper to get our kids to BP than it is all the way across town to no, that makes um, sense. Old Collins. So yeah. Just right. something to think about as well. It's a segue to support that. I can tell you for a fact that that is correct because mm -hmm. we are currently yeah. transporting yeah. that those remain that remaining group, and there is the cost savings because of the location. Yeah, I, I just remember. Savings. It being a sticking point that, you know, we have to pay the transportation for the year based on the number of kids that started the school year for, for Old Colony. And a lot of those would end up not getting the shop they wanted, going back to a pond equipment, we had to continue paying for that yep. transportation cost. You know, and so it's just one thing that would stood out to me. It's, you know, hopefully that can be avoided in the future somehow. Just an added incentive as well. Yeah. We've been very fortunate for the last over 20 years now that we've, uh, we've come to net school spending only. We, we only assess net school spending, so we've never gone above uh, net school spending. You know, we don't come to the district and ask for more. Mm -hmm. We ask you know, whatever, whatever the state has given us. That's what we go with, and uh, therefore there are really not much to really speak to because I'm not asking for additional assessment. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Okay. If you don't mind, I'll leave, I'll leave this here, and if anybody wants, I'll leave the, some of the brochures at the, the shops and things that we have, and if, yeah. you know, I'll leave them all here, and if you want to spread right. out the town so you can get the word out. So the brochures awesome. give you the list of the shops? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, I think people will be interested yeah. in that. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, just leave them there, and then people can grab them, and yeah, anywhere. Yes. I'd be happy to facilitate through any information for the community through Mr. Langlais, whether it be, of course, 
I mean, I think the critical piece is going to be collectively, there's only so much for educational funding. Yes. And I think the superintendent, for example, Lakeville, is going to have to work with those vocational schools for the limited resources that exist for the town, and we understand that. Yeah. So that's going to be the most critical thing. You've always paid a vocational dollar amount, you've always paid for transportation, but now adding that capital piece, that's going to have to be a consideration given. That would be a consideration given no matter where they went. Yeah. It's certainly something that the town's going to have to and, and gain support from moving forward. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much. Yep, totally agree. Thank you. All right. Moving on. To, let's make sure I don't skip anything here. All right, agenda item 12. So this is discussion and vote on auctioning the property at 106 North Main Street. So this was a, uh, originally uh, taken for tax title. Yes. And it went up for auction and was auctioned off, and then um, it didn't go forward to uh, yes. closing. So I just wanted to bring it back to the board. I did send an email to all the department heads, uh, Nikki Grand is one of us, and said, does anybody have any need for this property? Um, because we'd like to, you know, we're not in the business of owning properties. We, we want to get rid of this. Um, but I wanted to just make sure with the board that you're, you still want to auction it off. Yeah, this is the one down almost in Berkeley. Yeah, that kind of goes all the way up to 24. With a shared driveway. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to make sure that there was no reason to not auction it off at this point. I can't think of a good reason. George, what do you think? Oh, it would be nice. It's a nice piece of property, but you know, being at the very tippity t end of town, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think we should probably try to auction it again. Um, was So last time, just no one. So somebody on it or, did or, bid on no. it. They did go under purchase and sale agreement, oh, okay. and then they backed out. I think gotcha. it might have been yeah, a bit we, where we had to. We yeah, them out at the yeah. I yeah. remember that now. And uh, but the problem with that was uh, the property was not properly described. Yeah. And there were a lot of issues with the property. Mm -hmm. and the buyer became aware and wanted to back out. Yeah, that's right. So uh, the house itself, from what I'm is a disaster and then there's issues with the land itself because of a gas pipeline coming through I'm not a hundred percent sure of that but that's what I've been told so I, I think it behooves us to do a good analysis mm -hmm. and so people can bid on it accordingly yeah I agree I, I, I mean there are the attorneys involved with this and we'll make sure all the easements and whatnot are depicted correctly yeah um, I don't know when the auction will take place. I just want to make sure there wasn't anything, any reason not to auction it off at this point. Yeah, I can't think of any. And so, and the only thing I would say, uh, we have no need for that land now, but looking ahead 10, 20 years or whatever, would that be something that would be beneficial to the town? And if that's the case, holding on to it won't be that big of a deal. No, it is a six acre parcel. Yeah. I mean, it is size of It'd be perfect for a billboard <laughs> because it comes out to 24. But I don't think we want those in town. I don't know. Uh, you, you, can, you can say no for right now. Yeah. I, I mean, I just, that's why I'm asking. I don't want to uh, move um, forward. I don't. I mean, I wouldn't want to rush into it since, you know, we've already discussed it. And uh, maybe we can. Hold on to I, mean, we, I can push board. this. I could push this to the yeah the next board. No problem. Just pass on it. All right, so I'll pass on that. No problem. Okay. So this is a discussion and vote to approve the agreement between Town of Freetown and Morgan Records Management for digitizing uh, digitization. Sorry, of water and sewer and planning maps and plans. So it looks like quotes around. About twelve hundred dollars, I want to say. Yeah. If I remember correctly. It's covered by a grant too. And it's covered by a grant. That's even better. Um, yeah, I think this is something we obviously need to do. Hopefully, this will free up some space potentially, or at least provide us, you know, uh, some a backup. Which, if there's any kind of flood or anything of that nature, we'll have these there. Um, so, any questions from you, George? No. Hey, Debbie. No. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to approve this contract. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Okay, so now we're going to move down to agenda item 18. So this is discussion and votes to declare the following items as surplus. So this is a bunch of stuff that's down at the highway barn. Mm -hmm. And it includes three water hydrants, which are kind of cool actually. I did see those. Uh, 100 old water meters and some old metal tools. Um, so they'd like to, like a permission to, you know, scrap this and, um, and authorize the water and sewer commission staff to clean up the space at the highway, highway department as well. So this seems like a no-brainer. Any concerns no, here? No. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to um, declare, sure. yeah, these items surplus, um, as well as clean out. So made the motion, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Board of Health. Um, Jared is not here today, he's ill, so I will do Board of Health real quick. So this is a um, discussion to vote to approve the sign the amendment agreement and amendment between the town of Freetown, the University of Massachusetts Chan Medical School for acquiring vaccines and billing services effective 2122 through 2123. Okay. Do I have an explanation of this? Yeah, so um, I think Lori had uh, the town nurse had come in a few meetings ago that she's going to start administering some vaccines and this company will do the billing to the health insurance agencies to collect for the administration, uh, you know, to collect for the for her administering the vaccines. She's gonna try to go to homebound people um, and probably set something up with the COA as she moves forward. But she's just beginning this but so this company, it's a contract with this company that they'll do the billing and, and collecting for the vaccine. Yep, yeah. and this will be a revolving fund. So I think this is gonna yeah. pay for itself, right? Right, that's, that's what, we, what we talked about. That's what about. we talked about, so. How did we uh, compare billing companies? The billing company we use now for the ambulance runs. And has that done a good job for us? I, I, I don't know, this was presented to me from Lori. Right, but you know, that's, one company, I think it might be worthwhile to uh, even put it out to bid because these companies charge a percent and okay. it amounts to a lot of money. Yeah, we can talk to Lori about that and see, uh, totally, you know, see what see what she says to that. I mean, I don't know if this is a very special specialized kind of thing. If not, medical if it's something, no, I, yeah, I agree. But yeah, so let's uh, talk to Lori. Maybe ask her to come to the next meeting and sure. and, and discuss this again, and then we can push that off to. Different meeting. So then we have next is Board of Parks Commission. So the discussion to vote on the payment system to utilize at the boat ramp. So I looked at this. Well, what system are we talking about? So this is for the so people can buy tickets to go into the boat ramp um, using a kiosk. Oh, so we're talking kiosk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, now one one thing I was a little confused about on this one, and I don't know where we went. Uh, is this like uh, is this decision has been made to go with this particular company? That's what you're making. So the first decision on this agenda is to decide if you want to go with a kiosk because prior you have voted to go with a like a pay a pay a mobile payment app. Yeah. And we don't have electricity or internet down there, right? So the kiosk, kiosk will be self sufficient, it has yeah. solar and everything else. Right. So we we as a committee feel like it's a better option is the kiosk. Yes. So the first vote is do you want to go with a kiosk versus, you know, a okay. mobile app? I guess that was my question, is it a specific was it a specific kiosk or was it the kiosk that's providing the packet that I saw? So we I mean I that kiosk that's provided in your packet is the one that we liked the best in okay. terms of it, that, what it can do. We also met with the representative out there today. Um, and, you know, it's it's part of the MAPC collaborative contract, which means it's procured already. You know, it's ready that's to good. go. Yeah. We, um, the, the, the one issue that we discussed was uh, the cost of uh, purchasing it outright versus leasing it. So. Once you the board makes the decision that they want to go with a kiosk, yeah, um, then we can discuss different options for financing okay. it. No, this isn't on the agenda, but if we're discussing kiosks, um, would it be worthwhile to purchase?
purchase two kiosks and have one for the transfer station. We've been talking about this for years. So I can look into that further, George. <clears throat> um, I don't have it in any budget. I'd have to put it in the you know the next year's budget. But I, I can do that and bring it up to the board a uh, later date. Okay, well, for this particular one, the boat ramp kiosk, I like the idea of going with the kiosk. I think it makes sense. We, just, we discussed this last meeting as well. So I will entertain a motion to um, approve a, payment, a, a kiosk as a payment system to utilize the boat ramp. Motion made. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. So now, discussion vote for town administrator to approve and sign documents regarding the kiosk at the boat ramp. So this is, I'm assuming, to get through the, to get us over the finish line. Right. So to it's find a, efficiencies yeah, here. Um, part of it is just the timing, right? We're trying to, we're trying to get ready for the season, um, moving forward. So because the documents, I'm, you know, we're not meeting again until the 11th. We thought it might just be easier. I sign the documents. I, I will. I'm not sure that we should have another uh, gender item, another meeting for the lease option versus the purchase option. Mm -hmm. Numbers. I forget the. Do you remember the lease numbers, Lillian? Yeah, it's in so the like packet. The equipment cost is twelve thousand seven hundred sixty-five dollars and ninety-four cents. And how much is it? The lease payment per month, though. Option one for thirty-six months would be four hundred six twenty. If you did 48 months, it would be 317.93, and at the end of both leases, it's um, end of each option to purchase it for a dollar. So what so happens? So the quote for the kiosk that we have right now is 12,697. Right, mm -hmm. and so here here's the thing: if we 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 move forward with the 12,690, we have the money in the revolving fund, we can transfer it over. However, it leaves our revolving fund with about eight thousand dollars. That revolving fund is what we use to operate the boat ramp. So that that money is what we, we move into our general fund to pay for our salaries for the attendance, the police details, the portage on rental, the trash rental. So yes, we'll be collecting funds from parking that will go into the fund, but I'm concerned with taking out the 13,000 or the 12,690 and leaving too little in the revolving fund to operate while we're, we're currently spending more than we're taking in. We're hoping that that levels itself off, but in the meantime, I think the lease option would be a much better option yeah. for the town. So it's yeah. The only thing I would say about that is maybe clerically, so to speak, it might be a better option, but uh, if we were to transfer out of the reserve fund, which would not be a problem, we'd have plenty of funds available. Uh, I think we'll save a lot of money in the long run, not leasing the purchase of the boat ramp. We so maybe you could run the numbers. I yeah, it's like two grand. Money. We'd save two thousand that way. Okay, but we don't over over the three money. years. Yeah. Right now we have about twenty thousand dollars in the revolving fund. So if I take thirteen thousand out, we'll, it will leave like seven. I think it's eight. Actually, leave eight thousand dollars. Okay, it's only two thousand over three years. Then. Seems like pretty favorable terms. Yeah. And then and we can buy for one dollar at the end. No, that's including the, the buyout option. Yeah, the buyout option. So it's so the, at the end of lease says it's one dollar to buy it out. Okay. So I just took the the payment times thirty six months and it came to fourteen thousand six hundred and sixteen. So it cost us two thousand over three years. Yeah, basically. kind of so, seems so, pretty reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Make it easy then. Yeah. Um, now we don't specifically have that on the agenda to vote on tonight. No, so we'd be voting on me signing agreements. Okay. All right, so with that, I will entertain a motion to um, approve the town, town administrator to sign and approve documents regarding the kiosk at the boat ramp. Motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I think I got everything. Public hearings in 10 minutes. Um, so, so we'll go to recess for 10 minutes and then have the public hearing. Do I need to, I, I haven't, do I need to call a vote for that? I always forget. I don't think yeah. so, right? Yes, you do. You do? Yes, so I'd say a motion to go to recess for 10 minutes and then come back to the public hearing. Wait, do I have that motion? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already counting both. Uh,
Motion made. All right, I'll think, uh, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we'll recess with back in 10. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to um, leave recess and come back into open session. Can I make that motion? Oh. Make that motion? I have to do that? Yeah, you have to yeah. make it. All right. Uh, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so now we move on to the public hearing. Um, I'm going to read the public notice. Notice is hereby given that NSTAR Electric, DBA, Eversource Energy, requests permission to locate poles, wires, cables, fixtures, including the necessary anchors, guys, and other such sustaining and protective features to be owned and used in common by your petitioners along and across the following public ways, way or ways. Ridge Hill Road, uh, to replace one jointly owned pole on Ridge Hill Road opposite 24. Number 24, Alexander Way, uh, southeast of existing pole 89-0.05, uh, to support the installation of additional electric supply equipment. Necessity for this is pole placement to support the installation <coughs> excuse me, of additional electric company equipment. Wherefore, they pray that, the, that due notice and hearing as provided by law, they be granted joint or identical locations for and permission to erect fixtures as they may be fixed, find necessary, said poles to be erected substantially in accordance with the plan filed here with, uh, herewith marked VZNE Inc. Plan uh, number MA2022-74, dated February 4th, 2022. Also for permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, cables, and wires in the above intersecting public ways for the purpose of making connections with such poles and buildings as each of said petitioners may desire for distributing purposes. Your petitioners agree that spare uh, space shall be reserved and maintained for the limited purpose of attaching one-way low voltage, low voltage fire and police signaling wires owned by a municipality or a governmental entity for public safety purposes only. A hearing to consider the above will be held on Monday, March 28, 2022 at 7 p.m. at the police station community room, 15 Memorial Drive, East Freetown, Massachusetts. Boom. Whew. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now uh, I'll open the public hearing. All right, so entertain the motion to open the public hearing. Motion Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Are you from Eversource? From Verizon. Verizon? Mm -hmm. Close enough. Why don't you just state your name? You can come up just to the, step to the front. Yeah, yeah just kind of. Oh, Verizon? Yeah, well, it's Verizon and Eversource think together. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, name is Ross Bilodeau, representing Verizon New England. Um, Verizon will set this poll because it's on the Verizon main side of town. Okay. So Eversource asked us to set this poll, so that's why we have to go to the hearing because we're the ones setting it. And gotcha. Like you said, it's just for their, they could be upgrading some kind of electrical equipment or something like that. I know it's it's a couple of businesses right there. Somebody could be getting a new upgraded service or something like that, so they need to place new equipment to accommodate. Yeah. All right. Great. And I don't. I mean, it's probably related to the, all the other Eversource stuff that I've been doing as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, this doesn't seem to be that invasive, right? I'm just so there. So in the application, it just says also for permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, cables, and wires in the above intersecting public ways for the purpose of making connections with such poles. So my concern is, what, are they digging up? The road to, to, to put underground electric to somewhere. I don't know. It doesn't really give you a specific thing. Um, am I reading that correctly? You're reading that correctly, but it's my understanding that they're not putting any underground in. This just covers them if uh, a customer goes in and they need to run an underground pipe to service a building or something. This just covers that pipe and the pole through that. So I think they write that in. Got there, Deb. Is that the uh, where it's gonna go? Yeah, this is the little map. So this is the new pole. This is you know South Main ticket. Okay. So yeah. So it's just I think it's moving a pole. That's all, it's, right? It's adding so a pole. So I think it's okay. moving it. Is, is it this saying pole? Oh, maybe it's adding. It's adding a pole. It's adding a pole. So this is Alexander. So this is Alexander Drive, Main Street. Existing pole is there and there. They're putting one in the middle. 
That's good. Okay. I'm okay with the poll. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so I'll entertain a motion. Well, should I close the public hearing first before I vote? Yeah, if there's a, no more um, public Is there, information. No one's... Carlos, anything? Oh, of interest. <laughs> All right. Do we have anything? I, yep, I do. All right, so uh, with that, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion second. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So now um, vote to approve or deny the request from Eversource Energy to locate poles, wires, cables, and pictures, including the necessary anchors, guides, and other such as saving and protecting pictures to be only used in common by your petitioners along the Cross Ridge Hill Road as described in the public hearing notice. So I'll, I'll entertain a motion to approve this. Motion second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I think that is everything. As George, let's say thank you very much for your time on the board. It's been a pleasure working with you. I'm sure I'll see you around sure. at the Country Club, most likely. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, from the bottom of my heart, really appreciate everything you've done for this town, and um, thank you very much. Did you play the day I saw you there? Not today. No, not Too cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I did. All right. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye.